example of one of the projects that's in process And so this is an example of one of the students' projects looking at um, teaching and learning in the U.S. and in China. And so you can see here, I'll scroll down just quickly, um, the combination of media that the student used to share her experiences. So the first part here is related to observations at the College of William and Mary. And there's photography, there's also videos of interviews that the student did with faculty members here at the college. And then also, um, further down, looking at comparing that experience with what she observed at Beijing Normal University um, and classroom observations that we were able to do at Shanxi Normal University in Xi'an and other conversations with faculty and students at the various institutions that we visited in China. So that gives you a, a little bit of an overview um, of the kinds of work that students are putting together. These are all works in progress, I should let you know. And um, I'll talk next about the assessment method that I'm using to, yeah, if you can help. <laughs> the assessment method that I'm using to actually um, evaluate the student work on these projects. Um, something that I've found in looking at um, these projects is that you can't use a traditional method of assessment to look at these media-rich um, assignments, that the format is different than what we expect from a traditional research paper. Um, the tools certainly allow for, I think, um, a greater representation of what students are learning, but it also requires a different type of assessment. And so what I have been, um, been using in looking at student work is formative assessment and letting students know that I'll give you feedback on your assignment. There'll be an opportunity for you to, to revise your work at least once. Um, I'll give you additional feedback and we'll, we'll kind of approach it in that matter. Very different from a more traditional format of you turn in your work, I'll look at it and give you a grade and we'll move on to the next assignment. It's very much uh, a back and forth um, experience. Uh, I mentioned earlier just recognizing differences in the format that with using web-based, media-based assignments I think allows students a different type of, um, allows them to present their learning in a different way, I should say. And so encouraging students to take advantage of those tools has been, um, I think, uh, one of my main roles is looking at, okay, well we have here the parts of a traditional paper, how might you infuse media into this assignment to, to really capitalize on what you've collected. I've been developing a series of rubrics um, to help guide students in their work here. And this is also a work that's in progress. And so you see the background here is, is one rubric. Um, another rubric is, is um, available on the website itself for you to look at as an example. And these rubrics, I think, have been a double-edged sword that um, in one way they, they help to give guidance, they help to give some definition to the assignment, um, but they also in some ways reduce the assignment to more formulaic terms. So looking at there's X number of points for this element, there's X number of points for another element. Um, and so I'm unsure how I feel about, about the rubrics, but they're, they're developing as we go through the through the semester. And lastly, this process has been one of building trust, I think, between myself and students um, about how the work is going to be evaluated, um, how students can best demonstrate their learning. And so for me, it's been a pro uh, uh, um, I think I've had to gain students' trust to say, do a draft. Show me what you have there. Let's start putting this together. Let's start using the media in different ways. I'll give you some feedback. It's not gonna be a matter of getting a bad grade, um, but let's look at how we can improve this into another revision. And so that's um, a process that I've actually enjoyed as a teacher, really being able to engage with these eight students in that way. And then lastly, wrapping up, um, I wanted to share with you a couple things that I saw as the successes of, of this project and a couple things as far as recommendations. Um, I think that the 
that the use of digital media has really expanded the way that we're able to document student learning and how students are able to tell the story of what they've learned. Um, the, the trust in the buy-in process has been one that's been meaningful for me and hopefully for students as well as we negotiate how these assignments are going to be evaluated. And um, I also think that the interdisciplinary reach of this project overall has been fantastic. The um, faculty from both the Chinese Studies program and the Confucius Institute came and visited my class and we were able to have conversations both in the class and outside of the class that I wouldn't have been able to have without kind of the structure of this project. So I've really enjoyed that. In terms of recommendations, I think that, that the technology itself um, has been a learning curve for myself as an instructor as well as for the students. So we've spent probably more time than I've expected just figuring out how do we best use this? How can we edit um, a 30 minute interview um, video down to a 30 second clip. And um, having a media coordinator in the class, whether that was a student or someone who was more formally a part of the class to help us with that would have been helpful. Um, and lastly, I would say that um, if you're considering using these types of media um, in your assignments or web-based assignments, to be open to the idea of an evolving um, assignment and also to prepare students at the beginning um, for that kind of evolution, I think would be helpful. Um, so thank you for your time. I think we'll have a little bit of time at the end for more questions, and I'll turn it over to Emily to talk about her project.